Welcome back to wagertalk.com. We've got college bowl action Tuesday, Navy at San Diego State. Brian, uh, during the regular season, when teams play teams like Navy, Air Force, and them that run the triple option, Georgia Tech, we always say that it's an advantage for those teams because teams only have a week to prepare for them. They're not used to facing those offenses. And I've always said that when you get to the bowl game, I think that's negated because the team generally is going to have at least three weeks or four weeks to prepare for the bowl game from the last time they played so they can see all the film, prepare for it, practice for it, and are a little bit better prepared. And sometimes these teams, the offenses don't do as well when they get to the bowl game as they did during the regular season. Would you agree with that assessment? Definitely. And if you take a look at how Georgia Tech and Navy and those type of teams do in the bowl games, they don't have as much success. And with that said, now I'm going to make a case for Navy <laughs> in this one. Um, one of the other things that we talk about with the bowl games is teams, where they go. Is it a reward? You know, are the mm -hmm. players happy to be there? If you're a San Diego State team, ending up in your home, your own stadium, to me, I know people are going to look at, wow, it's home field advantage. But are you excited about you worked all year to have a winning season and get rewarded? And your reward is you get to stay home. Have you ever been to San Diego? I have. Been I don't to San know Diego. if I'd want to leave if I could afford to live there. You know, I, I, well, I agree with you. San Diego is very nice. But if you're these, if, if you're 20, 20 to 22 year old kids, are you excited about staying where you're at? I, I think you are. San Diego State didn't have a great football season. They're lucky to be at a bowl game. They're happy to be at a bowl game. And you mentioned, and this is San Diego State's home field, Qualcomm Stadium. But Navy, it's sort of like a home field for Navy also because they have a huge uh, military look contingent there. You're looking at my notes. <laughs> my eyes aren't that good and I can't read upside down. No. But uh, so this is like a, a dual home field advantage for these two teams. There'll be just as many Navy fans as there will be. San Diego. Exactly. And I that's one of the angles I'm going with here is because it will be, say, you know, San Diego being the big naval uh, uh, base that it is. And it'll be for them. I think Navy is more ex excited to be in this bowl than San Diego State is. Uh, again, leading up to the game, we'll, we'll read press clippings and stuff, uh, you know, practices and how things are going but I to me I just don't think it, it's uh, a reward uh, to me if I'm I'm in the San Diego State players I want to go somewhere else I, I want to experience something else other than what I, I do all the time another advantage that I think San, that Navy has here in this game is because this is one of the earliest bowl games um, you know being on Tuesday and the fact that they played their last game they were the last team to play the college football season playing their annual game against Army they just played last week so they've only had a 10-day break where San Diego State's been off for a month and some people can say well that's a better advantage for them no you can't mimic game speed in practice as much as you want to try it's not game speed to me I think that was the best tune-up for Navy was having the Army game and then, you know, their offense would be good. Because one of the other reasons why I think the tri teams with the triple option and stuff don't do as well in the bowl games is obviously, yes, the extra time for the defense is to prepare, but the triple option's all timing. And when you haven't played for a month, you know, your timing's not as crisp in that. And so I don't think the offense clicks on its own as much to begin with as well. So them playing, I think, is an advantage. And that's one of the angles I'm looking at here. Well, there's a couple things there. Um, Navy, I mean, you're a situational guy. Mm -hmm. Navy just played their big game against Army. I mean, it's just a week ago. Last, while Navy was preparing for Army, San Diego State was preparing for Navy. Also, and I want, do want to point out, at this point I don't have anything in this game, but Na Navy has played the stronger schedule, mm -hmm. and they're an underdog in this game. That's something you always want to take a look at. But Rocky Long's the head coach of San Diego State. Mm -hmm. He's been in this conference for a long time. He's, he's faced Air Force in the past. He knows how to defend this offense. Bob Toledo, the former head coach of UCLA, the offensive coordinator for San Diego State, just announced his retirement. So this is, could be, and I don't know what kind of relationship he has, but you've got an outgoing coach. I'm assuming the players like him. 
extra motivation there. I'm kind of torn on this game. I, I really want to play San Diego State here, but New Mexico, or excuse me, Navy has had the tougher schedule. They've mm -hmm. played tougher teams, and, that, and as, which could be the case, that maybe San Diego State is not into this game. I think with Navy having so many fans there, maybe that'll give them some extra motivation. I really don't know. I'm, I'm kind of, I'd want to make a case going against you here, but not enough for a lunch bet. Yeah, yeah it's uh, what the way I felt on your other game uh, too. Uh, I couldn't disagree with you, but I couldn't uh, uh, so totally, far. you know, yeah. go with you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with Navy here, and I think the, you know, plus a point out. 2010 these two teams actually met in the bowl game and San Diego State uh, beat, beat them up pretty good. Uh, four year revenge of a little bit of a long time but still I'm going to throw it in there because it suits me. And, and, unless you're like a lot of people we know and take six seven years to go to college and you're still on that team. Yeah. <laughs> they don't remember. They, they're not they weren't there. But uh, the one thing I'll say about the Army game and yes that was their big rivalry. I also like to take teams that were a big favorite and had a lackluster game in their last game in their next one. And although Navy did beat their rival, it was definitely a lackluster performance with the score that we saw. Uh, it wasn't a great performance. I think I'd, see I'd be more concerned if they lost that game. Yeah. If it was like Wisconsin, mm -hmm. gets blown at 59 to nothing, you would expect a really good effort, that, a focused effort. They just wanted to win that game. All right, there you go. And since it's Tuesday, you get to tell you, it is $2 Tuesday. Head over to wagertalk.com, see who we got as the featured capper. Each and every Tuesday, we offer one capper, his best bet for the day, for just $2. Who knows, maybe it'll be Brian Leonard this week. Uh, we'll see uh, who it is. Check it out. And guys, uh, since this will be the last time you'll see us before Christmas, I want to wish you guys uh, a very Merry Christmas, a happy holiday season from both uh, Brian and myself. We truly appreciate you guys stopping by, watching the videos, all of the tweets you guys do and the support in the forums with us. We appreciate all the kind words and I appreciate you guys helping to make Wager Talk. We're only in our fourth month of existence. Uh, just been a fantastic four month ride and I wanna thank you guys. Uh, truly, uh, from bottom of my heart, uh, Brian, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, I, I do want to point out, I gave all the gifts to Santa, so he's in charge of them now. So I'm assuming everybody's going to get them. If they don't, blame it on Santa. <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. All right. He is Brian Leonard, a.k.a. Santa Claus. <laughs> I'm Marco D'Angelo. Happy holidays. We'll be back next week with more videos here on wagertalk.com.